So, as I say, antibodies are very helpful in the diagnosis, and it's unsurprising to see that they feature in the classification criteria that we now use to help decide whether patients have systemic sclerosis for the purposes of, of research studies. But what are antibodies? So antibodies are tiny proteins that are produced by immune cells that help guide other immune cells to the site of infection. They're extremely small, so I managed to work out roughly how many grams they'd be. <laughs> and that's, that is a very small, too. considerably many millions of times smaller than a grain of sand. But they're very, very important. And sadly, some children are born with either too few antibodies or no antibodies at all. And they very quickly become very poorly early on in their uh, life. And without treatment with antibodies being replaced, uh, they would become overcome by infection. And our immune system produces billions and billions of these antibodies. And the antibodies themselves are Y-shaped, uh, as this image on the, at the top of the screen shows. And the shape of antibodies is very important because that cup that the Y, the top of the Y makes, is actually the part of the antibody that helps to bind to other proteins, such as the proteins that are expressed on infections. And what, why uh, rheumatologists are interested in these, uh, these little proteins is because lots of our patients with the autoimmune rheumatic diseases produce autoantibodies. And a bit like the word autograph, autoantibodies are antibodies that are directed towards our own body's molecules. And our immune system should have uh, mechanisms to help remove antibody-producing cells that are producing autoantibodies. But in these conditions, these cells aren't removed and these autoantibodies can be found in the bloodstream. And these autoantibodies often target proteins that sit within the nucleus inside the cell. And we call those anti-nuclear antibodies because they're targeting the little purple ball actually deep within the cell itself. And we're able to look for these antibodies. So, and this image at the bottom of the screen shows a test called indirect immunofluorescence, which is a test we use where we light up antibodies and then we uh, coat cells with, anti with patients' blood. And then we look under a microscope to see if we can see those antibodies. And as Professor Denton was saying, the actual staining pattern that you see on this immunofluorescence study can actually help you decide which antibodies those patients might carry. 